principles that you are following, but not on the things, small, small things like uh, you miss out a number incorrect. That is not important. Not the technical details. Not so depends. Very nice analogy I heard regarding this from Rabindranath Maharaj. Yeah. He was telling about a crane. It yes. stands on one leg. Yes. And he keeps meditating and sees so many small fish going everywhere, but yeah. it doesn't get disturbed. But he just waits for a big fish, then he takes it and he feeds on it. Mm. So Maharaj was telling that's how we should focus. We should not let the small, small, small things, things affect us. us. Yes. Focus on our goal and then let it transcend nice. the situation. Very nice. Mm. Shri Vishnu Sambhadha Yes. <laughs> Devotee is like a crane. Yeah. Like a... Uh, salt. Salt. Mm. Three, three things are there. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. If you find out, tell me also. Yeah. I like to know. <laughs> I'll send that. <laughs> okay, next verse. Tadru Gita Sangho Jadavani Guddha Tadru Gita Sangho Jadavani Guddha Vijjana Vijyo Vacharasi Aparaha but you sir, it appears that the influence of your great spiritual knowledge is hidden. Actually, you are bereft of all material association and fully absorbed in the thought of the Supreme. Consequently, you are unlimitedly advanced in spiritual knowledge. Please tell me why you are wandering around like a dullard. Oh, great saintly person, you have spoken words approved by the yogic process. But it is not possible for us to understand what you have said. Therefore, kindly explain it. So, Prabhupada's first thing in the Prabhupada is saintly people like Jadu Bharata do not speak ordinary words. So, like when you are not, you know, clean or you are not uh, following a culture properly. So when you come and see a saintly person, the impact that they have on you is because they can cut through all your mm. <laughs> illusions. And, uh, garbage. And then garbage, illusion, <laughs> all nonsense that you have. Suddenly you see, how is this light shining through? <laughs> right? That's why Om Agyana Timirandasya. They can shine the torch light of knowledge. And similarly, when he said that, it immediately evoked and revealed something to the king. And therefore the king is also not an ordinary person. He has some uh, advancement. Otherwise he, can, he shouldn't be able to identify this. Right? For, you can use yourself as example. You talk to so many people. Uh, how, how, how often do you recognize the other person's advancement? <laughs> or rather, how often you see the disqualifications? <laughs> right? So either you can be a bee or a fly. Yeah. So here you can understand this king is also not an ordinary person. Okay? And so therefore his questioning is like Arjuna questioning Krishna. And Prabhupada's point is that he wants us to come to this ability to have good association and able to clarify points like this so that we can make advancement like that. And his main thing is ultimately he wants everyone to be chanting the Maha Mantra. Because that is the process for this age. He never deviates from that. In, in whatever things he, 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 he makes his point, he always uh, makes this uh, main important thing that ultimately, you know, even if the person don't come to the temple, at least if they are chanting at home, you know you have done something good. <laughs> uh, we all want the best thing, you know. <laughs> But we are not going to get everything. Right? You go and preach to someone, you, 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 you go there you, with friends, you spend six months, and then they still, at the end of the day, they'll say, No, Prabhu, you know, it's okay, I'll uh, stay here, you can go. <laughs> I don't want to come to Hare Krishna temple. <laughs> uh, 
But then you say, okay, don't have to come. At least, chant. Oh, that I can do. It. Then you can call once in a while. How is the chanting going? You have a reason to call. Like that. <coughs> so, yeah, so that is how you, you show them that you are their well wisher. Then they will say, these people are actually nice. So then, because you're always asking, the, are you chanting? Then they will feel, oh, I should, you know. Then they chant a little bit. Then, because they're chanting, their hearts get purified. Then after a while, they'll come. Right? Text 19. <laughs> Vidam Munina Paramam Guru Vai Rastum Pravatta Kim Tiharanam Tat Rastum Pravatta Kim Tiharanam Tat Shakshad Dharinyana Kalavatinam Shakshad Dharinyana Kalavatinam Interesting. I consider your good self the most exalted master of mystic power. Who is a master of mystic power? Krishna. No, uh, the, another avatar. Kapil Dev. Yeah. You know the spiritual science perfectly well. You are the most exalted of all learned sages. And you have descended for the benefit of all human, uh, human society. You have come to give spiritual knowledge and you are a direct representative of Kapil Dev. The incarnation of God and the plenary portion of knowledge. I am therefore asking you, a spiritual master, what is the most secure shelter in this world? Mm. Now you know why he called him Shukla. Shukla. Yeah. <laughs> because he already saw him as representative. Representative of Kapila Dev. Yeah. So Jadbara was already empowered the, with the knowledge of Kapila Dev. Mm. <laughs> so he is not. Ordinary, <laughs> he's an empowered person, right? We, 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 we talk about empowerment, only one or two people we can accept. We cannot <laughs> accept. <laughs> Even if a devotee can do nice things, we should say there is some empowerment. Yes, we have to accept that. You know, if they can uh, do uh, major preaching, right? We have to accept that. There is some empowerment. This person is not ordinary. I have to give them due respects. And treat them nicely and hopefully they will bless me. Prabhupada yeah. quotes that to, to, to tell people that, you know, that uh, he is actually empowered by Krishna. He doesn't openly say it, but he says that quite often he quotes that verse. Because at that time his own god did not accept that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he was humble, just like Jad Bharat was very humble. But you can see, the king was so fortunate and not only that, he was also very advanced in spiritual knowledge to recognize him as an empowered person. And then immediately he takes the position of a student, student and say, you now tell me, and his question is, most secure shelter in this world. Mm. Who asked that question also? Parishit Maharaj also asked, you see? But a man about to die supposed to be. should take shelter of Yeah. So you notice that the Bhagavad, our Puranas, you can see they never deviate from the same things. Eh? And the answers are always the same. Consistency. <laughs> okay, so. <coughs> I was hearing a lecture from Vaishesh Prabhu about this topic of association. Mm -hmm. And he was mentioning that. Uh, even though we find somebody advanced, one has to be non-envious to take advantage of that association. Yes, yes, yes. Anasu yeva. One has to be without envy. It's difficult though, because sometimes you may be doing something very good also, and then you see another person doing good also, then you think you are as good as them. But they may be doing it more for Krishna and you may be doing more for yourself. <laughs> so it's very hard to uh, overcome that envy at that time. You are not like the gopis who are envious of each other for pleasing Krishna. <laughs> we are not. <laughs> we are envious because we want to be Krishna. <laughs> 
But you are right, absolutely. You cannot take shelter of another person if you are envious of them. But it doesn't mean that, uh, also I want to clarify, because there are so many gurus and so many disciples. It doesn't mean this guru disciples are envious of this, that guru. No, not like that. Uh, I, I once explained, and I will explain again, it, the, the potency of the Lord is also spread through the different personalities who take the role of a guru. So the qualities of that uh, Krishna may be more emphasized in a certain person, and that is what is attractive to you. Actually what you are attracted to is Krishna. Mm. Uh, and so. that Guru Tattva is actually Krishna's potency. Thanks and the much. individual who carries is exalted. Mm. Therefore, Shakshadaribhaya Nasamastha Shastri. Again here Kapila Dev, uh, yeah, empower, empowered person, Jantpara. So, yeah. So when, therefore, each individual who is attracted to Krishna, Matsya, Avatar, uh, doesn't mean he's envious of Krishna. <laughs> no, he's attracted to that aspect of that person. Yeah. So the same, like Prabhupada's qualities are among his disciples. Yeah. So you'll see different uh, aspects of Prabhupada's qualities. So that's how you, we should see. If you see like that, you're broad-minded. You're ma- you are becoming a Mahatma. If you don't, then you are Duratma. <laughs> So let's uh, you know see it like that. Yeah, Shaksha Daryan Nasamastha Shasha. Prabhupada says that. So we should see it like that. Okay, next verse. <laughs> Vishwaranam Gatim Anda Buddhi Vishwaranam Gatim Anda Buddhi Katam Vachakshita Grahana Bandaha Katam Vachakshita Grahana Bandaha Is it not a fact that your good self is a direct representative of Kapila Deva, the incarnation of the Supreme Personality of Godhead? To examine people and to see who is actually a human being and who is not, you have presented yourself to be a deaf and dumb person. Are you not moving this way upon the surface of the world? I'm very attached to family life and worldly activities. And I'm blind to spiritual knowledge. Nonetheless, I'm now present before you and I'm seeking enlightenment from you. How can I advance in spiritual life? What did the Arjuna say? Shishya stay Yeah, same thing. Same thing, you know. Wonderful. It looks like uh, Kapil Deva was a great influence on Prabhupada. You can say like you know, that. Rishabhadeva yeah. came later, but I think Rishabhadeva's teachings part comply with what Kapil Deva yes. is. You can say like that, or in another sense you can say is Jad Bharat, whatever system his father taught him, he, he, he followed so strictly that he, he is then now empowered by Kapil Dev, you can say. And the other way you can also say is, like you said, yeah? that the teachings of Rishabhadeva is in line with Kapila Dev. Yeah. But then again, his father was Supreme Lord. Yeah. Supreme Lord. <laughs> Both are there. Right? Kapila Dev in Kapila. Yeah. So, yeah, so you can see. <laughs> so, the point ultimately they both recognize now is that I am not the body. My designation and your designation is not real. So now tell me what the role of a soul is supposed to be. That's what he's saying. Service. Service? Service, yeah. He's asking, what am I supposed to do? How how can I get for advance? Tell me how to be a spiritualist. Right? Modern uh, society, there's a lot of people who say we are spiritualists. But what is their spiritualism? Mysticism. Well, more, it's only, it's a show bottle, yeah, but up to what level? More of? Goodness, somewhat. Maybe, maybe up to good up. Yeah. Mostly yeah, the little pleasure. yoga, <coughs> vegetarian, <coughs> veganism, uh, <laughs> you know, what else? You know, must look good. Mind calmness. You know, whatever they do. <laughs> so it's bodily concept, huh? Mental, cal- mental calmness. Right, right. Also. Yeah, and then uh, Ayurveda, and then they, they have some music, uh, some incense stick. <laughs> that is their spiritualism. <laughs> New age, what they call new age, new age. <laughs> but you can see here, it's straight to the point. Okay, I'm a spirit, so what am I supposed to do? And uh, when uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu met 
Sanatan Goswami, right? What did he say? Okay. Who am I? Why do people, uh, you know, throw so much, uh, you know, praise to me? But I, I understand I'm nobody. <laughs> And these all exalted people, you know, and they and they they are not saying. They're not doing it because they know we are going to hear. No, <laughs> they're not acting. Actually, they are feeling yeah, it, yeah. genuine yeah. feeling. Which means these emotions that they are going through is what we should also be going through. This is reality. The soul should also feel the same way, and then you will attract the supreme Lord. Hmm? Krishna. Yeah. So one has to surrender to the uh, guru who can actually deliver us from all these things, right? We we study that. Tad vidyatam sadhurum eva takirchit shruttarvyam brahmanishtam. You go out to collect wood for so that he will give you knowledge, not collect wood, <laughs> right? Because he has brahmanishta, he can give you that brahmanishta. That, that fixedness that you want, not, not the material things. Material things come and go. They've already discussed that already. <laughs> whatever position you are, CEO, NEO, whatever, <laughs> oh. <laughs> CTO, whatever, <laughs> no nonsense. All these are just temporary. I was just uh, reading some CEO, big guy, big CEO, then he sold his company, no more CEO. <laughs> He became one of the employees. <laughs> you know, so what is all the temporary? Yeah. Always the bigger fish eating small fish. Yeah. It's always like the text 21. Krishna Shrama Karma Atmano Vai Krishna Shrama Karma Atmano Vai Bharatu Gantu Bhavacha Chanamanye Nasato Dhanayanadi Abhava Yathasato Dhanayanadi Abhava Samudra Ishto Vyavahara Marga You have said, I am not fatigued from labor. Although the soul is different from the body, there is fatigue because of bodily labor and it appears to be the fatigue of the soul. <laughs> when you are carrying the palanquin, there is certainly labor for the soul. This is my conjecture. You have also said that the external behavior exhibited between the master and the servant is not factual. But although in the phenomenal world it is not factual, the products of the phenomenal world can actually affect things that is visible and experienced. As such, even though material activities are impermanent, they cannot be said to be untrue. Mm-hmm. It is very logical, no? mm-hmm. but at the same time there is some fallacy also. Mm-hmm. And then Prabhupada says, this is a discussion on impersonal Mayavad philosophy and the practical philosophy of Vaishnavas. The Mayavad philosophy explains this phenomenal world to be false. But Vaishnava philosophers do not agree. We say it is temporary. true and yeah. temporary. temporary. They know that the phenomenal world is a temporary manifestation, but it is not false. A dream that we see at night is suddenly false, but a horrible dream suddenly affects the person seeing it. The soul's fatigue is not factual, but as long as one is immersed in the illusory bodily conception, one is affected by such false dreams. Right? Like, uh, like I'm feeling very uncomfortable, my throat is hurting. But as a soul, the soul doesn't get affected by that. Mm. But the body is. Mm. Because I'm identifying with this body, I'm feeling it. <laughs> like that. So we are in some, uh, some false dream. <laughs> so therefore, if you dream something uh, horrible, do you keep thinking about it? You no, know, of course, you don't. You try to forget it. I try to do something not to dream again. <laughs> anyway, so Prabhupada mentions a water pot is made of earth and is temporary. Actually, there's no water pot, there is simply earth. 
However, as long as the water pot can contain water, we can use it in that way. It cannot be said to be absolutely false. So that's to de defeat the Mayava thinking, you know. What is that? Brahma Satyam? Yeah, Neti Neti. Neti Neti. They mix it up. That's uh, part of the problem. Text 22. Hari Agnitapat Payasho Vitapas. Hari Agnitapat Payasho Vitapas. Tata Patas Tandula Garbarangi. Tata Patas Tandula Garbarangi. Hindriya Svas. King Ragugana continued, My dear sir, you have said that designations like bodily, fatness and thinness are not characteristics of the soul. That is incorrect because designations like pain and pleasure are certainly felt by the soul. You may put a pot of milk and rice within fire, and the milk and rice are automatically heated one after the other. Similarly, due to bodily pains and pleasures, the senses, mind and soul are affected. The soul cannot be completely detached from this condition. <laughs> True, until he gets the knowledge to give it up. It's from the subtle body. Position. Yeah. Huh? He's taking our position. Yeah, he's taking our position. In a sense, it's true. And the, the argument you can see from Prabhupada says, this argument put forward by Maharaj Raghugana is correct from the practical point of view, point. but it arises from the attachment to the bodily conception. So, you know, like Prabhu also was saying, it's a subtle body, not the soul. <laughs> Desires and all are attached to the subtle body. Then Prabhupada continues, it can be said that a person sitting in his car is certainly different from his car, but if there's damage to the car, the owner of the car being overly attached to the car feels pain, <laughs> right? Which is what people without true knowledge feel like that. Mm. It's a nice <laughs> analogy to understand. Yeah. Actually, the damage done to the car has nothing to do with the car's proprietor, but because the proprietor identified himself with the interest of the car, he feels pleasure and pain connected with it. So that's duality also. This conditional state can be avoided if attachment is withdrawn from the car, mm -hmm. from the body. Then the proprietor would not feel pleasure or pain if the car is damaged or whatever. Similarly, the soul has nothing to do with the body and the senses, but due to ignorance he identifies himself with the body and he feels pleasure and pain due to bodily pleasure and pain. So in one sense, King was right, but actually he did not understand the true principle of the soul and the body. Yeah, thank you. <coughs> Continue. Shasta bigota nilapati prajanam. Shasta bigota nilapati prajanam. Yakin karovai na pinasti pistam. Yakin karovai na pinasti pistam. Adharmam saradhanam achutasya. My dear sir, you have said that the relationship between the king and the subject or between the master and the servant are not eternal. But although such relationships are temporary, when a person takes the position of king, his duty is to rule the citizens and punish those who are disobedient to the laws. By punishing them, he teaches the citizens to obey the laws of the state. Again, you have said that punishing a person who is deaf and dumb is like chewing the chewed or grinding the pulp. That is to say, there is no benefit in it. However, if one is engaged in his own occupation duty as ordered by the Supreme Lord, his sinful activities are certainly diminished. Therefore, if one is engaged in his occupation duty by force, he benefits because he can vanquish all his sinful activities in that way. Because that's the duty of the king. He has to make sure they follow their varna and ashram. <laughs> it's a good argument. So Prabhupada says that it's certainly very effective. Uh, in his Bhakti Rasam and Sindhu, Rupa Goswami says, Tasmad kenapi upayena manaha krishne nivesha yet. 
somehow or other one should engage in Krishna consciousness. The second part of the verse, this is. This is the second part of the verse. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Mana Krishna. Tasma Kinapi Upayana, Mana Krishna, Nuveshaya. The first part of the verse is Katamo Pina Venasya. Panchanam Purusham Prati. This is from uh, seventh canto, no? Where the who's that? Some other one must consider the form of Krishna very seriously. Then, by one of the five different processes mentioned above, one can return home back to Godhead. Atheists like King Vena, however, been unable to think of Krishna's form in any of these five ways, cannot attain salvation. Therefore, one must somehow think of Krishna, whether in a friendly way or inimical. I'm just reading from the verse, mm-hmm. seventh canto. Okay. Because okay. <coughs> remember, the in the seventh canto is like uh, Yudhisthira Maharaj uh, discussing about how the gopis have lusty desires. Shishupal had also, but his thought was envy, and then Kamsa was fear, and how they all got liberated. So uh, that is the discussion. Somehow or other, think of Krishna. <laughs> That is the thing. Mm-hmm. But one should think favorably, that not unfavorably. Mm-hmm. That's, that's pure favorable. devotion also. Krishna Yeah. And Prabhupada's point is the same here. Eh? Um, the whole idea here is uh, not to juggle the words. <laughs> right? Not to juggle and say, okay, maybe the body, this. You can argue logically a lot, but at the end of the day, are you going to remember Krishna? Right? Like the, when you have a service, right, do you think of the service to Krishna or do you think I have to do the service? Uh-huh. Should be the first. Yeah, exactly. Attitude to serve Krishna should be the first thing. But you can see, when I ask you the question, you, you can see where, where your mind is going, right? You can see, my, I don't think like that. <laughs> Second is Karma Yoga, first is Bhakti. Yeah, <laughs> not necessary, but the point is, yeah. it should always be, okay, uh, I, I, I am going to dress Krishna, or I am going to cook for Krishna. What would Krishna like today? It's totally different from, I am going to cook this, and that's offered, and I am going to pack so much, and go home. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you can see where we are mostly at, right? Our consciousness is at. And, uh, and we should lament that we are not uh, at a higher consciousness. But the whole idea is somehow or other one should uh, engage in Krishna consciousness. That means I have a service. Uh, service shouldn't be centered around you. <laughs> it should be centered around Krishna. Somehow or other, where is Krishna in that service? Right? Similarly, like when you go on Harinam also, right? You go out, what is your consciousness? Is Are you thinking, oh, they are seeing me, I better dress properly, which is important anyway. Is it? it is important because then you're representing Prabhupada, right? Yeah. If you, if you go out like a fool, like Jadubhara, who's going to come <laughs> to that temple? <laughs> so, so there's, there's a certain thing, materially you have to be at certain level, but Transcendentally, you should practice thinking of, Lord, I'm doing this, and I hope that they can see you in us, that they will come to take shelter of you. Yeah. That's hard enough. Yeah. And when you chant the Holy Name, you're ch- trying to please the Lord. You know, Lord, we want to help this people. Yesterday, we were in uh, your guidance retreat, and you said you should try to elevate the consciousness. Yes. So you were thinking, like, what can we say that would elevate the Yeah, when you do books, you, you try to say things that will make them feel, yeah, this is a good thing, yeah. yeah. Nobody has come from, uh, some civil books are given up, but nobody has come to the temple from that. Yeah, that. yeah, you see, the the whole service, you, you have to understand, is it's service. It's not fruitive. Can, 
happen later. Yeah, it can happen when you are not here at all. <laughs> it can happen when you are dead and gone, then all these books will suddenly wake up. <laughs> so we cannot worry about, oh, I get It happens immediately when you are Yes, I get that. We become <laughs> sad, ego, false ego. Uh, you never know when it's going to hit the, meet the right person. The book you give to the person may not be the right person. But he may be the media for another person. And that is, the book is actually going to the right person. <laughs> but you have to start somewhere, right? If it's in the warehouse, it's not going to go anywhere. <laughs> okay? The book travels by the mercy of the Lord and he is guiding principle, actually. The Bhagavad is Krishna. And as soon as the jiva is ready, he reveals himself. Is it okay to give like free books to the people? Yeah, you can somewhat. Somebody's person is favorable. You can, but uh, that's when you talk to the person. So we feel that they might just throw in the garbage. True, that's why you have to talk to the person and then see if they are favorable. He's going to read it and take a chance and give it. Take a chance, yeah. But if you find the person is just, ah. Yeah, but again, you know, these are things you do not understand. Sometimes your person may put it in the bag and then put it in the library, ten years, yeah, <coughs> yeah, yeah. come and see and say, book, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, generally free books, ninety percent of the time is in the trash. Yeah. Prabhupada said that. Prabhupada said that also. Yeah. Like My uh, experience is like that. We used yeah. to do in Australia. And then we think, oh, we did so many books. <laughs> then you walk around the, the place, all the trash, you see it's like hundreds of books. Then we, pick it all up and then go. Actually, yeah, they were doing in San Jose also, they do give out free books also, they almost have a sponsor. We found two or three and then I'll get Yeah, yeah, it, it's, <laughs> it is like that, you know, if you take that risk, you're going to have that issue, so. Uh, Something we can ask them to do. Yeah, I think Prabhupada wanted us to, you know, engage the people in some service, uh, in a nice way. So you attract them, you engage them either in taking prasadam or singing the holy name. Like he, he went to the park and he chanted. Yeah. You know, so people came and chanted and participated in that. So they were engaged and therefore they got purified enough to... Because he's very powerful also. Yeah. Like we have to chant for a million years to get that kind of uh, attraction, maybe. <laughs> Call it by the statement. But the point is, yeah. You try to engage, you know, uh, if they, you know, you see someone, you know, you, you give them, say, give a book, they say, no, I'm not really interested, then you give a cookie, right? So they're doing some service, yeah. and then make sure you have ingredients there, no peanuts, yeah. There's a lot of peanut allergy, yeah, <laughs> unless you carry an EpiPen, $600 worth of it. <laughs> You, you know what I'm saying, yes. Somehow or other, engage them. Or if the person is not interested, then you say, can you read this for me? You say, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Yeah, that, that, that you can do that also. So at least some kind of service. Yeah. <laughs> I, once, one day I went with Guru Bhakti Mataji distribution. That's like New Year, I think. So she had cards of Hare Krishna Mahalatra and she was telling everybody. It was very nice the way she was so simply she was presenting. She said, do you believe in the uh, power of prayer? We went door to door in apartments. Mm -hmm. Then she, they all say, yeah, we believe in prayer, so you want to sing this prayer with me. So she made everybody sing like that, every house. Yeah, powerful. Mm -hmm. Power of yeah. <laughs> prayer. Power of prayer, she is powerful. Yeah, so that's our aim also. Yeah. So why we want to elevate the consciousness? They are all doing sinful activities. So you cannot therefore say nobody is coming. <laughs> when we think like that, we are fruity. That means we demanding Krishna to send the people. But you can uh, pray for people to come and join the temple, but you cannot demand. No, how they do it? So in Prabhupada's time, everybody is joining here, there's nobody coming, it looks like that. So. Yeah, yeah, we, we, yeah, we can't say that we are not preaching, because a lot of people are preaching, but maybe uh, we don't have sufficient uh, purification or empowerment, because we still may be attached to many material things. So therefore, we may try ten years and we we'll get two people joining. You know? <laughs> or you get two years, you, you, you do nicely, fix, and you get ten people joining. It depends on the, your level of uh, 
you know, because most people out there are also frustrated with the philosophies. Too many. You know, too much, uh, too many types of philosophy. Everyone is saying they are the right way. Yeah. <laughs> so therefore, if you go out out there, your preaching should be, they should see you as such a great person that they want to see more of you. They may think, not necessarily I want to join them, but I like these people. Right? So just like, you know, we open the restaurant in Houston, so then we get like 100, 200 people daily, just like that, you know. And they, and everyone who comes is so happy with what we are present. And they, they all want to come to the temple room. Mm. They all want to see the temple. And they all go saying, this is so nice. Mm. Like okay. that, you know? So you don't have to do anything. You just give them prasadam. <laughs> And some people are like repeat customers, you know, they're like, you know, I'm so glad you open in this neighborhood. So they're coming every time. So the temple is open, the grounds are open, we don't go and preach at all. They come and ask us. Then we say, here are books, do you want to know more about us? You can give some donation, that's it. They take and they give. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's the, the restaurant was able to make it to just come for the start. Yeah, yeah. From so that's, it like will affect, it will affect in 10, 15, 20 years. You can't expect the uh, in instant gratification, no? Mm-hmm. 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 also says in his lectures that in Pol- Poland they do the Sarilam, right? And he says that we are seeing, we are sowing the seeds now. Yes. We may not see this practice even in our lifetime, exactly. but we are doing ourselves. Yeah, that's right. The mood should be serving. Yeah. All right, let's for twenty-four. <laughs> Whatever you have spoken appears to me to be contradictory. The best friend of the distressed. I have committed a great offense by insulting you. I was puffed up with false prestige due to possessing the body of a king. For this I have certainly become an offender. Therefore I pray that you kindly glance at me with your causeless mercy. If you do so, I can be relieved from sinful activities brought about by insulting you. So we know, right, these offenses are very dangerous. Mm -hmm. The first offense is to blaspheme the devotees, dedicated their lives to propagating Krishna. So anyone who gives some some little uh, to Krishna is, is considered in that category. You cannot just say, oh, you know, this guy is not. Even those who left the movement, but they had dedicated so much in their past, you cannot insult them. You You remember we were talking about certain people who left and came back. Vishnu Dutas came for them, you know. Who's going to come for us? (laughs) We don't know. (laughs) Yeah, we don't know, you know, so... So do do the the activities that will please everyone. And the best thing is the best thing that pleases everyone is you are their servant. I'm telling you now. I'm not joking. <laughs> Whoever says that you like, yes, Prabhu, I'll do <laughs> they are happy with you. <laughs> depends. Depends. In your relationship. Internally that should be the more. Yeah, internally of course. But externally if you are it the boss. If you are the chairman of the company and you're like, oh, please work for me, it's gone. The company closed tomorrow. <laughs> you can't do like that. No. It depends on your position and so on. I think sometimes we, we become more a devotee at the workplace and less a devotee at the temple. <laughs> you know? So that, that is, uh, there's something wrong with that. <laughs> we become big controllers at the temple and we go out there big servants. <laughs> I think <laughs> we need to, you know, study more. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. Like the, the pussy cat out there. <laughs> because we have to discriminate as we 
Yeah, yeah, you need to. Yeah, so you have to see, you know, that individual. Sometimes, you know, your employer, or employee, right? Uh, if you act in a certain way, they become favorable to you. And if you are a devotee, you want to be able to give them some Krishna later on, right? Otherwise, it's meaningless even to work and just not have Krishna in it for them, right? Yeah, so therefore you have to see according to your situation. Okay, if you are very aggressive, then they, they may not take up Krishna from you. But if you are a nice person, but strong-willed in, in your opinions, they'll say, yeah, that's cool, you know, I like that, you know. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Americans have a different way of seeing, Indians have a different way of seeing, you know. Uh, you, you never know, you have to see, or you have people who go behind and backstab, right? <laughs> so all those kind of people you have to understand how to deal with. You know? So human psychology plays some part, but essentially being a devotee will teach you how to behave with others automatically. Because yeah? the, the Jnana, the Divya Jnana is revealed to, oh, behave this way to this person. Jnanam Chahan Ahay to come, right? <coughs> so it will come like that. <laughs> See, Prabhupada writes there also, right? One may attain the topmost platform of devotion service, but somehow or other, if he offends a Vaishnava, the whole structure collapses. So, it's very, so you cannot think that I am so advanced, I'm a sannyasi. You know, I must be advanced. <laughs> so then you come to a temple, a, a devotee is so surrendered, doing deity worship, and then you say, well, what's wrong with you? Why you don't go out on books? But the person is doing amazing deity worship, he or she doesn't know. Then they're offending them, right? Yeah, so then he, he gets a reaction later on. Krishna will punish. He said, hey, you just offended my dear devotee. What's wrong with you? <laughs> You have to be very careful. Because in the early days, a lot of the sannyasis were like that. Very, you know, powerful people, but they were also very harsh. So, um, they all fell for the Many of them. Offenses yeah. or because of not doing the devotion? Both. Once you commit offense, you lose uh, chanting, taste, no? <laughs> taste for chanting. <laughs> But if you are if you are regretful and then, you, then the Lord allows you to chant. So bear in mind these things are very important. You may sometimes don't even know you are committing offense. So always take the humble position. Jeeva Swami Sambar mentions that forgot. We commit like Jeeva Swami Sambar mentions. In Zandarva. Yeah, I think mm. if you commit this many offenses, then you will not. Uh, we'll have no taste and if you come with this many appointments, we'll oh, stop chanting. Oh, is chant. that nice? Stop yeah, that's yeah, nice. Yeah. In, in which Sandarbha? Somewhere I will try to get there. Okay, uh, send it to me. I like to... I heard in a lecture. Mm. So I need to find out. Jeeva Goswami in one of the Sandarbhas, he writes about if you commit this kind of offenses... This, this many offenses? This many offenses, this many offenses yes. you will not be lose taste. Yes. The, you lose this, you lose that. Like mm. So I said, I want to know <laughs> more. Yeah, <laughs> So I know where my tally is. Apparently <laughs> 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 that was a good thing, so I am not testing. Only the it's okay. This <laughs> my count is here, so I am having struggle in chanting wins this much. Yeah. <laughs> and if you stop chanting wins, yeah. I think Vishwanath Chakravarti also explains in Madhurya Kadambini some of the offenses. Um, Viplishya, all those things. Uh, even in chanting, why you have no taste, yeah, all those things. Isn't that uh, true that uh, Prabhupada, uh, I think he told his disciples, because they told me, one of them was in a class, it was many years ago, twenty over years ago, was, they were saying, they asked Prabhupada, you know, where, how long we have to chant to get the taste? <laughs> then he said, twenty years, like the twenty, thirty years. Sincere Sincerely, yeah. Sincerely. Without committing offenses. <laughs> 10 or 11 years, if you do all the regular principles and chant, some things and... Uh, yeah, I... I no, yeah. Prabhupada said like this, if you... Then what are you saying? Every day, every day. Yeah. That's first canto. Following four regular principles. First canto. Yeah, it's there. Yeah. Then whatever the person speak will be accepted. Yeah, because he's, he's following True everything. or something effective. Something. Whatever he says, people will listen yes, without yes, questioning. Yeah. <laughs> 
So that also is like tejas, you know. But if you commit offenses, you lose that potency after all. And you would expand it, like it's like a devotional service is like <coughs> a flight. Yeah, yeah. And I've then every time we commit offense, we are putting a small hole in the fuel tank. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's filled, flight will be still going. And then one day all of a sudden you will see the tank is empty. <laughs> if the holes are smalls only. <laughs> So it will be still going, but all of a sudden it will be empty and empty, crash. Yeah, and you will crash or sink in the ocean and they will be looking for you for the next two years. Are Krishna. <laughs> right? <laughs> then the aircraft. Evolution. Yeah, evolution happens. <laughs> anyway, it's our devotion practice will go down and nobody may look for us. Actually, devotees look for other devotees when they leave also. That's one thing I've noticed. Mm-hmm. Devotees are very compassionate. compassionate, even if they are in disagreement also. Yeah. And I'm, I'm telling you, I've seen it myself, also. people who have committed big offenses against the Guru, against your God-brothers, against even ordinary people or dumb uh, animals, I've seen. I've seen one uh, Prabhupada said, very harsh with the dumb dogs in Mayapur, heat and whack and so on. And then you you will read in uh, Gokisha Das Babaji's uh, Memoirs that are uh, not memoirs, his uh, teachings, teachings uh, Maharaj writes, no? but he, where he eats with the dogs and he says they are all dumb vases, <laughs> an exalted person. And we just read the other day, right? Yeah. All the Prabhupada says, uh, all, the all these uh, hogs, dogs, <coughs> and. Uh, just take one life. Exactly. Take one life. See, in the dumb means, they, uh, that is their last life. I was seeing that uh, Govardhan people were sleeping on the street. Right, right. But they didn't look like they are devotees. But <laughs> what, what do you mean? <laughs> when you are yeah. down, you have yeah. to be careful. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> judge <laughs> better. No? Drinking tea and everything. Yeah, it doesn't matter. So, you are not the judge. <laughs> I mean, I'm asking can they go back to the two lifetimes? Hey, the Lord can take yeah, anyone, yeah. anytime. <laughs> it's not our prerogative. Yeah, the prerogative <laughs> is with the Krishna. He can say, oh, let him bring his last cup of tea, <laughs> or last toddy, or whatever they say. Yeah, right? Yeah. And, the, and the Asuras are fighting with Krishna, and then they can also go back to God. Right? We read so many pastimes. <laughs> all the Asuras who fought at the battlefield of Kurukshetra, right, they all got liberated. That was impersonation. Some of them, not all. Yeah. Go to Vaikuntha and those who, who who were favorable to Krishna and appreciate his hmm? wonderful form went to Goloka. I move. I will move. Acharya is coming. No, Acharya is coming. Alright, text 25. 25. Sulapani is uh, Lord Shiva. Mm. Oh, my dear Lord, you are the friend of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is the friend of all living entities. You are therefore equal to everyone, and you are free from the bodily conception. Although I've committed an offense by insulting you, I know that there is no loss or gain for you due to my insult. You are fixed in your determination, but I have committed an offense. Because of this, even though I may be as strong as Lord Shiva, I shall be vanquished without delay due to my offense at the lotus feet of a Vaishnava. Right? It's very true, actually. Ambarish Maharaj, who is the Muni? Durvasana. And who is he? The guy, incarnation. Exactly. <laughs> so you can see, you know, <laughs> these statements are not just made uh, just like that. There's meaning. Even they, they are strong as Shiva, if they 
offend a Vaishnava, they cannot get out of it. <coughs> so here he's saying that even the devotee, he may not take the offense because the devotees are naturally humble. Uh, yes. But still, he will get the reaction. Yeah, because the, the Lord and the dust of no. the lotus feet of that devotee will take offense. Yeah. <laughs> or the holy name will take offense in, in our cases. Like, yeah. So we have to be very careful. <coughs> So the same uh, quote about Lord Shiva and that is also quoted in the Madhya Chaitanya Bhagavad. Yeah. Okay, that ends the... Uh, I'm not going into it because we have talked about blaspheming and uh, Vaishnavas, offensive. And, um, I think the problem is it doesn't stick to our consciousness because we are very much in bodily consciousness. Uh, and so we don't seem to remember committing offense is serious thing. So every time this we talk about it, the same thing comes about. You know? So it means it's we are not uh, on the uh, higher platform, which means we either not chant pro chanting properly, or we are not following principles properly, or we are taking devotees for granted. Every devotee who comes to the temple or who takes initiation is an exalted person. So you have to somehow cultivate that consciousness. Uh, yeah. You have to be careful, no? You are brushing aside Tulsi. No? Let's be careful. I remember one time when I was, uh, I, I was running for some reason and then the Tulsi was in the path and I crashed into her and then she got broken. You know? so, but anyway, I, I mended and tied it up and she grew again. But uh, I think uh, exactly one year later, I got into a vehicle accident and I broke like four ribs. <laughs> so, yeah, I, so I, I took it as, you know, I deserved it. <laughs> you know, immediate reaction or reaction after. Yeah. And it was hairline, they couldn't find it after a long time. Somebody will disturb you. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you will disturb me, somebody else will disturb you. Yeah, so therefore, you know, uh, be careful. Because, you know, we, we, we don't think and we are running and then we just crash into the plants outside. Like that. <coughs> Not intentionally, but that's what happens. Okay, so we're now going to chapter 11, Jad Bharata instructs King Rahudana. So now, because the king was so humble, and uh, then, then he is qualified to receive the instruction. Receive the instruction. See the power of Surya Bhagavan. <laughs> you can just split everything. <laughs> no, they were all sitting here, then the sun came out, all had to move. <laughs> Are you taking a break? Yeah, okay, we'll take five minutes. Ten minutes.